I often get asked, what's the one crop that's easy enough for anyone to grow, regardless of their skill level, yet still impressed with its abundance of harvest? No question, my answer to that is always the same. Zucchinis, a ridiculously prolific summer squash that virtually anyone can grow. But despite this guy's plentiful nature, there are things that even veteran growers can do to get the most from this crop. Today, let's talk about all things zucchinis. Let's look at all those growing tips that you need to know to give you a healthier plant, which in turn is gonna provide you with more consistent, reliable harvests. Zucchinis are the rare crop that I grow where I'm exactly 50-50 on the fence on whether to direct seed or start them early. Being a warm weather summer plant, either way, you're gonna wanna wait for those soil temperatures and your nighttime lows to reach at least 65 degrees Fahrenheit. If you are direct seeding, simply place two or three seeds about an inch deep in some nice moist soil. Planting more than one seed is gonna give you 100% site success for germination, and then you can just thin to the strongest plant after they sprout. Likewise for starters, I pre-seed my zucchinis about two months before I intend to plant them outside. One seed per cell in a moist organic seeding mix kept at a relatively high 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Within a week, the plants will emerge. First, it'll be two huge seed leaves or cotyledons, followed by the more familiar true leaves about a week later. Again, Ensuring that the nighttime lows are staying above 65 degrees Fahrenheit, plant your zucchinis in a full sun location in a moist but well-drained soil about two feet apart. Zucchinis are a large plant, and even with diligent pruning and maintenance, they need their space. Mulch the plants nice and thick, and then water thoroughly. Pretty basic and easy stuff so far. And for the most part, this is all that you'll need to do to obtain those epic zucchini harvests. However, there can be pitfalls, even with epic producers like these guys, and it usually boils down to problems with the three Ps, pollination, pests, and pestilence. Let's look at those pests first. Unfortunately, with zucchinis for as big as they grow, the list of pests that attacks them is equally as large. The top ones are aphids, cucumber beetles, cutworms, leaf miners, spider mites, squash bugs, squash vine borers, thrips, and whitefly. For all of these, prevention is the best medicine, as pests will often choose to attack plants that are subpar health-wise. Over or underwatering is always going to be a draw for pests. In fact, so is over-fertilizing. Fine mulches like straw really seem to help, and for cutworms and vine borers, planting a dense cover crop the previous winter prevents the eggs and the larva from ever being laid in the first place, keeping your zucchinis happier and healthier in the process. However, as true gardeners, we know that not all insects are bad. Zucchinis, like all squash, have imperfect flowers. That's not to say they're not stunning, because they really are. Now, what I mean by imperfect is referring to the scientific definition of a flower, indicating that each one is either male or female, not both. To more accurately put it another way, they are incomplete when it comes to trying to pollinate themselves. As such, Zucchinis really do rely on external factors to pollinate their flowers and thus produce their fruit, and the largest contributor to this are bees. It's the male flowers that pop out first on rather elongated stems. And while they do last quite a long time, the timing doesn't always work out with the female ones. Don't be surprised if the bloom times for your male and female zucchini flowers aren't always matching up. The best way to combat this is to simply plant multiple plants. That way, 
male and female flowers are always available for max pollination. Now, to diagnose whether or not you have a pollination issue in the first place, you'll start getting fruit that looks like it's succumbed to blossom end rot. It's indicative of otherwise healthy plants that are consistently producing small underdeveloped fruit that'll often rot, shrivel up, and fall off. If the plant looks good, even though this looks exactly like blossom end rot, nine times out of 10, it's a pollination issue. Let me tell you, pollination issues are the single biggest factor in holding you back to getting those epic zucchini harvests. So, if you're ever in doubt, hand pollination can be done. And that brings us to our final P, which is pestilence, better known as disease. Much like pests, this one manifests itself when the plants are under stress or they're grown in suboptimal conditions. The top culprit here is powdery mildew. And if you've never seen it, you've likely never grown zucchinis before. Wet, overlapping, overgrown leaves, as well as poor airflow are the main causes here. And they're easily solvable by not watering the leaves from above and dedicated pruning and leaf management. And this brings us right into our active growing tips. The day-to-day -day things that we can do with our zucchini plants to help them grow better. And tops on that list is pruning. Zucchinis want to grow large leaves and lots of them. It's in their nature. However, only the leaves above the fruit contribute anything back to it. Which for us means anything below that fruit is unnecessary to the plant as well as our harvests. So we can prune it off. Just this simple act of taking off a few leaves is going to increase your airflow, allow the plant to direct more energy to its fruit, as well as get those leaves further away from the mulch and soil and the direct vectors that transmit pest and disease. This, coupled with the removal of yellow and dying leaves, is the single biggest thing that you can do for keeping your zucchini plants healthier for longer. But of course, there's a few more as well. And a big one is water. Like we said, zucchinis are large plants. Look at these leaves, and look at the fruit for that matter. These guys take a copious amount of water just to live. So, make sure to do it in the morning and water that soil thoroughly and directly. Not only to keep those leaves dry, but also to train the roots to go downwards. Next, we have nutrients. Big plants need big time food, but not all the time and definitely not just one macro. The tendency with large plants like zucchini is to go huge with the nitrogen. And while these plants do need this macronutrient, a balanced approach is infinitely better. Like we said before, too much nitrogen all at once is gonna attract the pests. As well, it's gonna stimulate the plant to produce leaf growth over fruit production, something we don't want. For zucchinis, go with a balanced NPK and only feed them twice in their entire lifetime. Once, right after you plant them, and then again when you start to see more than two or three blooms. All of that is really good stuff, but like we said, without proper pollination, you're not going to be getting any fruit, at least nothing usable. Make sure that the flowers can be seen from above and try to grow more than one zucchini plant to increase active pollination. If problems do persist, don't hesitate to hand pollinate a few flowers to see if that rectifies the issue. Once you get into true zucchini production, they come fast and furious. Which brings us to our final point, and that's to pick more, to harvest more. Zucchinis are best harvested immature and small, around 6 to 8 inches long, depending on the variety. By harvesting that fruit early and often, the plant gets to reset itself and get ready for the next round of production. Brilliant stuff. Brilliant, 
but kind of overwhelming. We covered a lot of stuff today, so to help make sense of it all, here's a helpful recap. Zucchinis are such a unique crop in that 90% of the time, they'll produce more than we can possibly eat. Yet, it's those 1 out of 10 times where something goes wrong that frustrates us the most. Three main issues arise when growing zucchinis. Pollination problems, pests, and pestilence, also known as disease. Like all squash plants, these guys have both male and female flowers, so pollination can be a bit tricky. It's almost always accomplished by bees, so keeping the flowers visible and growing more than one plant is the best solution. There are bad insects though, and quite a few pests can attack squash and zucchini plants. Fortunately, healthy specimens seem to be able to fight them off. The key is not to over-fertilize, over-water, or underwater them. If you can give them lots of sun, air, and the right amount of moisture, pests usually won't be an issue. Finally, prune all the lower leaves below the lowest fruit and remove any yellow or dying ones periodically as they appear. The increased airflow will ward off powdery mildew, allowing your zucchini plants to produce for you for much longer, much more reliably. And that's really where you'll want to get to with these guys. Zucchinis are no doubt a monster producer, and for the most part, don't need any help from us to give a monstrous harvest. However, if you've ever found yourself battling with this crop, or maybe your plants burn out early, there's usually a reason for this. Hopefully today we've armed you with all the tools that you'll need to set your zucchini plants up for their best season yet. Hey, happy growing guys, and I'll see you soon. Hey, thanks so much for watching guys. I appreciate the support more than you know. And if you're getting value from these videos, please like and share them to spread the word and help your fellow gardener to grow better.